Hello YouTube and welcome back to another 3D ROS tutorial. In this video I'm going to go through all of the blend nodes in Substance Designer and I'm going to show you what each version of the blend mode does. So starting off with copy because it's the first one on the list. What copy does is it basically it just places the foreground image onto the background. So in this case I've got my 3D ROS logo and I've just got some black and white spots for the background and I've converted it to a gradient just to make it a colour map because our image is a colour and then as you can see it's just placed the top image onto the bottom and then if we use our opacity it just changes the opacity of the foreground now the next one is add so again I've got my 3D ROS logo and the black and white spots but this time I've swapped them around. So what this one does add basically adds the top colour value to the bottom. So the, these colours here you can see it's black, bit of white, it's kind of came through onto our background image. So as you can see this bitmap is getting filled with the colour from this image. And if I reduce the opacity, as you can see this time it's reducing the opacity of the black and white spots because I've got that on the top. And as you reduce it, you can see it's no longer affecting our bitmap and we get the actual image. And this can be really good for blending height. So our next one is subtract and what it does it subtracts the foreground from the background so here I've got a white circle and when it's fully white it'll completely subtract so as you can see this white circle has cut out our background image but if I add a levels and I just make it a bit darker it's a bit hard to see. If I make it a bit darker, you can see that it doesn't fully mask it out, but it reduces the opacity a bit. And the same with the blend mode, if you just reduce the opacity, it'll reduce the opacity of the foreground, this, meaning that it'll mask out less. So the next one is multiply. And what multiply does is it it gets the results of the two and it makes it darker so if the top one was a medium grey and the bottom one was a black then it would make the medium grey darker but if it was a white then it, it, it wouldn't make it lighter it always makes it darker so the result is always equal or darker compared to the original. So as you can see we'll start off with the black and white spots as the foreground and then I've got my bitmap into the background and as you can see where things are light, so white, white will keep exactly the same as this and as it starts to get darker, so a bit grey, it'll get darker, and black will make this black, so it'll kind of cut it out. So this is good if you've got a really white image and you're trying to build up layers and make it darker. On to the next one is add sub. So add sub, add sub takes the foreground pixels, and if it's higher than 0.5, it's added to the background pixels. If the foreground pixels are less than 0.5 grey then they are subtracted. So here I've got two circles, one is white, one is a medium grey. So as you can see the medium grey in this example has not changed our bitmap image at all because it's in the middle. But our white has made it brighter, therefore it's just a white circle but if we add a levels in here and we make that circle just a bit darker you'd see that it's not fully bright now 
if we change that it starts to get brighter as we make the circle darker it gets darker so if it's a medium grey like this it stays the same so in the middle of a grayscale color chart if it's on this side of it it's going to make it darker if it's on this side of the grey it's going to make it lighter Okay, so the next one is Max Lighten and Min Darken. The Max Blending mode will pick between the extreme values between the background and the foreground. Lighting will be the lightest and darken will be the darkest. So here I've just got set up this simple sheet of just 3D ROS. What I've done is made part of the image black and part of the image completely white and then here is the same as the top but I've just decreased the contrast a little bit so it's more grey and then the bottom is just a medium grey and I plugged that into the foreground and then the background is the black and white spots so where it is a medium grey you can see it's kinda in the middle so anything white on the background is going to come through anything dark isn't because I've got it on lighten it's only going to affect the lightest areas as you can see if it's already white it can't get any lighter if it's black that means anything under it unless it's completely black is going to show through because it is lighter but now if we switch to min darken let us see that anything black before is going to stay black and then the white areas because the other image is darker then it's going to darken that so this time the image is darker overall this is lighter overall the one after that is switch now switch is very similar to copy and I haven't fully understood the difference yet. So switch is um, a blending mode where blending the background and the foreground according to the opacity. So here, the closer you get a zero, the more you will see the background. The closer you get a one, the more you'll see the foreground. So substance has said, although switch looks very similar to copy mode, they remain different. In copy mode, it's just the foreground covering the background so as we've seen before the foreground is covering the background and although this looks the same so the foreground when opacity is 1 it's covering the background uh, however substance says it's different so in switch mode will we melt together the both inputs deciding which one is more influential so I haven't fully figured out what that means yet but it does seem to blend a little bit differently through the colors but also I think something they noted as well is if it's on complete zero or complete one the image that isn't rendered will not be processed however with copy it will be so if we've got this on zero this is still going to be processed in the background even though it's on zero where however with switch it won't be so obviously that was a bit of a rubbish explanation because I don't really know how this differs to copy much but just try it out and see what you can come up with so the next one the next blending mode is divide Hi, so I thought I'd re-record this bit because on the original part I rambled quite a lot trying to explain the divide blend mode. But basically divide has the opposite effect of subtract. White has no effect on the blend values. Only as the blend values get darker does the result get brighter. So as you can see where my mask is white here, well fairly white, not perfectly white you can see that it shows our image perfectly but as it gets a bit darker you can see it affects it a bit more 
so it starts to seep in here but you can also see that it's not quite the same as subtract because the background image is having somewhat an effect on it as well so because that is due to the light and dark values of this area so if we switch between here you can see that this differentiation of values is having an effect on this whiteness area here also so that's just something to bear in mind so the next one overlay which is used a lot alongside multiply so overlay is fairly self-explanatory so what I've set up here is the same as the previous quite light quite dark I've got my two here and I've made my background grey and the reason for that is if you see the difference between these two you can see again grey shows the normal image and when we overlay a light colour on top of our image it makes it lighter if we overlay a dark colour on top of our image it's going to make that area darker so the next one is screen so I've just got the same circle set up again and now you can see the difference here so we've got this image and we've got this and you might notice screen is pretty much the opposite of multiply so the image can only get brighter so black a black value a dark value is the same as our original image and anything lighter than fully black will start to make our image lighter so the inverse of multiply where anything white or darker will make the image darker and the final blending mode is soft light soft light blending mode creates a subtle lighter or darker result depending on the brightness of the foreground blend colors that are more than 50 percent brightness will lighten the background pixels and colors that are less than 50 percent brightness will darken the background pixels so just like one that we've had previously however you can see it's much more subtle and not washing it out a lot uh, but yeah so soft light is a bit less extreme than the others so we can see this top this top circle here is almost fully white at 200 yet it's only brightening the image a little bit unlike something like screen where it's fully white just it's a, it's a bit more subtle and adds a little halo around the same with the dark this is almost black but as you can see it just darkens our texture just just a little bit and obviously if you reduce the opacity that'll just reduce that effect by more so soft light is just a softer alternative to something like screen or multiply so yeah, that pretty much concludes the video. I'm sorry this video wasn't as organised and edited like some of my recent videos, but I thought I'd get a quick tutorial out there to help you understand the blending modes in Designer. If it helped, please leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.